Kyo is a short, gloomy, and antisocial high school student who fantasizes about killing his classmates in gruesome ways. If you can relate to him, boy, do I have bad news for you. There's one girl he wants to kill in particular, Anna, a popular girl and model. He hopes to one day bask in her pained face. During lunch, Kyo retreats to the library. There, he encounters Anna stuffing her face with rice balls, or, depending on your region, jelly donuts. Kyo spies on her, and he witnesses her eat an entire party-sized bag of potato chips and cram her social studies homework. When she realizes that she doesn't have her cutter, she instead tries to tear newspapers in half with her bare hands. Kyo can't bear to watch, so he lends her his cutter. She thanks him for helping cut her work time in half, pun intended. However, when she finishes, she places the cutter into her pencil case. When her friend Shihiro comes to pick her up, Anna hands Kyo her bag of chips, realizes it still has chips inside, eats it, and hands it back for him to throw away. Kyo is left with an empty bag of chips and one cutter pourer. The next day, Kyo finds his cutter back on his table. It is warm to the touch, implying that Anna held it in her hand the entire morning. The class breaks into groups for their presentations, and Kyo overhears Anna's groupmate, Mocha, bring out a brand new social studies project after claiming that Anna's was a mess. Kyo is furious, but Anna takes it in stride. However, once they start presenting, Anna's eyes are lifeless. When it is Kyo's turn to present, he notices that Anna is on the verge of tears. A helicopter flies overhead, causing the class to glance outside the window and in Anna's general direction. Hoping to distract the class, Kyo slices his group's presentation. The class stares blankly at Kyo, but Anna is already over the presentation, and she is too busy talking about the helicopter. Later, Kyo overhears his classmates having naughty fantasies involving Anna and Shihiro. Kenta reveals that he prefers girls with a bit of meat on their bones, like Hara. Kyo drops by the library, as does Hara, who explains that someone asked to meet her here. Hara is self-conscious about her weight, especially since Anna claims she eats as much as she wants. Kenta arrives to meet with Hara, but unfortunately, Anna can't read a room to save her life. Kenta reveals that he likes big girls. He likes them big, he likes them chunky. Anna realizes too late that she is intruding. Kyo accidentally makes a sound, and he follows Anna's instructions to act like a cat. Anna joins him and pretends to be a second cat. Kenta and Hara bond over their mutual love of cats, and they hit it off. Anna gives Kyo a thumbs up and leaves. Later that afternoon, Kyo stops by a bookstore after remembering Anna saying she was in this month's latest fashion magazine. Not wanting to attract attention, he returns dressed in the most emo clothes possible. When he finds the magazine, he discovers that Anna is also there, trying to be noticed by a pair of high schoolers. Unfortunately, her aggressive attitude drives them away. Anna shamelessly places her magazine on another pile, and she also takes out a pen for autographs. However, when a staff member fixes the magazine display, Anna dejectedly leaves. Kyo feels bad for her, so he buys her magazine. Later, he flips through the pages and scans her various photographs. However, he is only reminded of the wildly different worlds they live in. The next day, he sees Anna talking to a guy named Haruya, whom he assumes to be her boyfriend. He walks a few paces behind them, and it becomes clear that Haruya is simply hitting on Anna, who is clearly disinterested in him. He can't catch a hint. She even claims not to have any line or social media. However, they start hitting it off when Haruya calls Anna funny, which gives Kyo a sick feeling in his stomach. However, Haruya is persistent about adding Anna online, and he doesn't take no for an answer. He prevents Anna from walking away, and she is pressured into bringing out her phone. Chihiro is coming behind them. Kyo, the absolute madman, sends his bike flying downhill, blazing past Anna and Haruya, and falling into the river. As a crowd gathers, Chihiro tells Anna what Kyo did. When Anna asks him why he did that, he replies that he pressed on the gas instead of the brakes. Anna can't help but laugh, and she says that Kyo is pretty funny himself. The library is Kyo's sanctuary, but Anna, the girl he wants to kill the most, often invades it. And on this lazy afternoon, she is currently mixing some do-it-yourself candy snack. After realizing that she needs water to mix the candy, she runs off to find a water source. Anna repeatedly spills the water, prompting her to revisit the faucet over and over again and forcing Kyo to wipe the floor clean. Anna apologizes, claiming she was going to clean up later. She returns to trying to get water, so Kyo decides to retrieve a glass from the home economics room before recess ends. With only three minutes left, Kyo runs and jumps like an Italian plumber, grabs a glass, and returns to his princess. However, Anna has realized she could just bring the candy kit with her to the faucet, and she finally completes it. Kyo, embarrassed, uses the glass to drink water from the tap. Anna hands him her used plastic, 
and she returns to class. Kao claims he doesn't want her use spoon, but he lied as naturally as he breathes. In class, the heat causes Anna and her friends to form a fanning circle, but her poor depth perception causes her to hit Shahira repeatedly. Kyo finds it odd that someone as popular as Anna spends her time alone at the library, and he suspects that she must be planning to kill him there. Anna complains about how sweaty she is getting, and there's only one thing on his and Adaki's minds. They might be able to catch a glimpse of her underclothes. Adaki tries to discreetly sneak a peek, so Kyo distracts him by dropping his pen and creepily playing with his box cutter. This gives Anna and her friends enough time to leave. Kyo finds it weird that Chihiro, whom he refers to as Anna's boyfriend, due to how close they are, is never with her at the library. Later, Kyo lends Anna his fan. She comments on how nice the fan smells, and she motions for Kyo to smell it with her. He catches a good whiff of the fan in her sweat. Yes, another man of culture. She receives a call from Chihiro, so she hides under the table and asks Kyo to cover for her. Chihiro strolls in, asking where Anna is, but Kyo feigns ignorance. In truth, he can feel the shield hero rising in his pants due to feeling Anna's body heat. Unfortunately, Anna bumps her head, tipping Chihiro off to where she really is. Chihiro takes a seat and reveals that Anna is just looking out for her. Chihiro is unable to eat snacks due to her allergies, so Anna hides when she eats so that she doesn't feel left out. Chihiro finds this side of her adorable, but she thinks it is unfair that Anna is also blessed with a great figure to boot. Upon hearing all these compliments, Anna pops out exactly as Chihiro planned. Kyo, still pitching a tent, heads to the bathroom to fix it. A week later, Kyo's class prepares a haunted house for the cultural festival. Anna, remembering that Kyo has good handwriting, sends him to assist Hara in decorating a tombstone display. He agrees, but he is distracted by Hara's two gigantic bazookas. Anna, dressed as Sadako, pops out of a well, giving Kyo a scare. Hara remarks that it must be nice to be as slim as Anna, though Kyo silently remarks that we all have our strengths. Hara leaves to clean the brushes, and Anna notices that the names on the gravestones bear her family name, Yamada. Adaki blames Kyo for writing it, and fearing that Hara might be bullied, he decides to take responsibility. When Hara returns, she explains that she only wrote Yamada because it was a common last name. She apologizes for the confusion and Kyo's name is cleared. He helps Hara redo the poster, and Anna softly says sorry to him. When Hara wonders what name they should use instead, Kyo writes his name. Later, Anna wants to apply some red paint to emulate blood. Kyo mixes in some black to make it more realistic, and she lets him apply some to her face. Kyo dots her cheek and runs off in embarrassment. On the day of the cultural festival, he sees Anna and her friends being hit on by Haruya and his friends. Kyo follows them, and though he is distrustful of Haruya, he was the first person to start pulling up his bike. Maybe popular people aren't so bad after all. Kyo is forced to take a detour when two friends block his path, and he ends up bumping into Anna. She drags Kyo into the 80 years ago exhibit, where she has fun pointing out where her house is. When their fingers touch, Kyo jerks his arm back. He wonders if they could take a picture of the map, but Anna misunderstands and takes a selfie with him instead. Anna's friends enter to admire the map, but Kyo is more fixated on the photo of him and Anna. Kyo sketches some designs for his fantasy novel involving someone who kills everything he touches. His heroine's design suspiciously looks a lot like Anna. A terrible headache sends Kyo to the infirmary, and Anna happens to be in the adjacent bed. She asks why he is at the nurse's office, and he explains that he has a terrible headache, so she digs around her pocket, pulling out clumps of candy, and offers him a single painkiller, which he graciously takes. With her stomachache gone, Anna returns to class. Kao realizes that she left her gym shirt behind, and he just barely stops himself from sniffing it. When the nurse sees her shirt, she tosses it to Kyo and asks him to return it. Now he has no choice but to breathe in Anna's sweaty shirt. Look at that satisfied face. He attempts to return Anna's shirt, but she runs back to the infirmary, prioritizing the candy she left behind. The next day, Adaki and his friends decide to ask the girls if they play with themselves. Kyo wonders what kind of hamster is running around their tiny little brain wheels. The girls give Adaki nasty glares as he approaches, so he instead asks to see their nails, and upon seeing their fingers well-groomed, he claims to the others that they definitely play with themselves. Adaki hands Kyo a note and asks him to hand it to Anna, fearing it might be something criminal. He swaps the paper for one of his sketches, and Anna is delighted to see a drawing of herself. Kyo opens the paper and learns that Adaki only wanted Anna's line number. Adaki doesn't know when to give up, and he approaches the girls with a personality test that secretly reveals their favorite position in bed. 
They are suspicious of Adaki's intentions, so he calls his friends over. They all take turns touching each other's hands, which supposedly shows if one is dominant or submissive. Anna is more preoccupied with preparing her snacks. Serena discovers the personality test Ashida was using, and the boys feign ignorance. Kyo heads into the library, with the personality test still fresh in his mind. Anna, who is trying to search for her candy, forcibly opens Kyo's hand, only to later find the candy in her pocket. Due to this, Kyo was led to believe that Anna likes to take charge in Later during gym, the class is split into groups of five to play basketball. Anna hopes to work off some fat in preparation for her photoshoot tomorrow, so this is a good experience. As usual, Kyo is left alone. Anna accidentally hits Kyo with a ball, and he meekly passes it back, and he finds himself wondering why his desire to kill Anna and his actual actions don't line up. He catches Anna staring at him, and while she is distracted, a ball hits her squarely in the face and she starts bleeding. While the coach brings Anna to the infirmary, Serena berates the girls responsible for laughing. Once again, Kao finds himself doing the wrong thing and he runs to Anna's aid. At the infirmary, the teachers contact Anna's parents and Kyo hides underneath one of the beds. He overhears Anna crying and apologizing to her mother, and he realizes that she was supposed to have a photo shoot tomorrow. She drops some of her belongings on the floor, revealing that she kept Kyo's drawing of her inside a protective covering. When Kyo sees this, visions of Anna fill his head. It is at that moment that he realizes it, he likes her. The next day, Anna attends classes as normal, though she soon grows annoyed that people keep asking her what happened to her nose. To remedy this, Shihira writes that she was hit with a basketball on the bandage. Problem solved. However, Anna breaks down in tears, confiding that her mother and manager were greatly disappointed that she missed the photo shoot, even if these things really happen. Kyo greatly sympathizes with her. Later, he notices that she has run out of pocket tissues. Since he still has a lot, he decides to leave her a pack in the library. To make it not suspicious, he scribbles feel free to use and leaves several packs on the table. He watches from the shadows as she uses it to clean her oily fingers after eating chips. Not their intended purpose, but he is glad to see her smiling again. Kyo tries to rationalize his infatuation with Anna, and he resolves not to go down that slippery slope, reasoning that love ends up ruining lives, as it so frequently does for celebrities. During lunch, Kyo catches her sneaking a carton of milk, and he initially believes that she plans to feed a stray dog or cat, but later in the library, he discovers she was only planning to make peruch, a strawberry pudding snack. When he sees that she is insane enough to try and make it without a bowl, he begs her to get one from the home economics room. The pair go together, but they find the door locked. Instead, they go to the chemistry lab, where they are wary not to alert a teacher in the adjacent room. Using beakers, Kyo pours in the mixture and Anna stirs it. She allows Kyo to taste it with one of his fingers while she drinks up the rest. When the teacher discovers them, Anna is startled and chokes on the peruch. Seeing how bad this looks, Kyo admits that it is peruch. Later, Ren, the girl who accidentally hit Anna with a basketball, tries unsuccessfully to apologize, leading a distracted Anna to drop her cleaning cloth outside. Serena pressures Ren into apologizing sooner, but the pair end up arguing, and Kyo knows better than to interfere in a catfight. Later, Kyo notices Rin trying to find the right time to talk to Anna. Unfortunately, Anna starts talking to Kyo, and she invites him to take a scary face swap selfie with her. Knowing the seriousness of the situation with Rin, he turns her down and runs off to escape. As he walks out the door, Serena grabs him. Anna waves to Rin, and the two sit next to each other. After taking a selfie with each other, Anna remarks that it would have been nice if her nose wasn't injured. Driven by guilt, Rin apologizes to Anna for hitting her with the ball, but Anna didn't even know it was her who threw it to begin with. She attempts to offer Ren some snacks to cheer her up, but she accidentally drops dozens of empty candy wrappers on the ground, which Ren and Serena help pick up. The girls reconcile and later, Ren and Serena apologize to each other. They even thank Kyo. On the way home, Kyo runs into Anna as she exits a convenience store. She admires his new bike and she jokingly asks for a ride. Kyo offers her one. She climbs onto the back and hands him 10% of her papiko, which is consistent with her gluttonous side. Kyo taxes her to Maroka's snack shop, and she learns that he is in the data processing club. She reveals that she plans to quit the basketball club, since she has been barred from playing and has seldom attended the practices anyway. She wonders aloud if she should join the data processing club, and Kyo meekly answers, yeah, this sudden intimacy isn't good for Kyo's heart. She asks him what his favorite flavor of papiko is, and he replies, coffee. She teases that he is afraid of change, and when the light turns green, Kyo pedals hard to dispel his impure thoughts. 
To his surprise, Anna offers him one whole papico. Cheekily, he snaps off the upper part and gives her the smaller portion. She laughs and waves goodbye. The next day, the teacher lectures the class after candy wrappers were discovered in the library trash can. He asks Anna if she has any idea who it could be, but when she denies it, he asks to see her in the teacher's office after class. Fortunately, the teacher was busy that day, so Anna's judgment day is delayed until next week. One afternoon, Kaya was out at a fast food restaurant with his older sister, Kana. To his surprise, Anna and her friends sit at the table behind them, and he exchanges glances with her. He overhears them talking about if Anna gets hit on outside, prompting him to stand up and order something. While in line, Anna strikes up a conversation, amused by the fact that he has an older sister. She remarks that she'll order some soft serve, but she forgot her wallet upstairs. Hio wonders if she went downstairs just to talk to him, so he buys some soft serve to give to her. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the courage to give it to her on the way up. A few days later, Anna drags Kyo with her into the teacher's office. The teacher begins interrogating Anna about the snack wrappers, but Kyo's law knowledge, sourced entirely from Better Call Saul, the good wife and ace attorney, allows him to maintain Anna's innocence. The teacher, impressed, gives him a hearty slap on the back. As thanks, Anna gives him some candy. As she happily skips away, she suggests that the two should talk more like friends. With workplace visits right around the corner, Kyo looks forward to working with crime investigation or something similar. Unfortunately for him, his class advisor Mita announces that they'll have to form groups of six and agree on a site to visit. Adachi invites him to form a group with Kenta and Oda, but they quickly split up so they could join Anna and Hara's groups respectively. However, Adachi is generally disliked, so they hold a vote to see which guy gets in. Kenta is chosen, but Kyo and Anna, aware that Kenta likes Hara, arrange for him to join the other group instead. Later, Kyo hides in the library as Hara comes to meet Anna. She shares that she's been making romantic progress with Kenta. Hara asks if Anna has had romantic experiences of her own, and Kyo overhears that she's never had a boyfriend. Anna pulls Hara in to share earbuds and a selfie. They stuff each other's hands in their pockets, only to discover they both have snacks inside. While checking the photo they took, they spot a familiar looking eye in the background, and they confront Kyo. Hara can sense that he has some feelings for Anna, and only Anna fails to see it. Later, Kyo struggles with his blooming feelings for Anna. He notices that it is raining, which he knows is a classic rom-com trope for lovers to bunk shoulders. Unfortunately for him, he has a raincoat. As he prepares to leave, he spots Anna, evidently umbrella-less. Seeing that he has a raincoat, she commandeers it so she can buy an umbrella, promising to return the coat after. However, he realizes that she forgot her bag and wallet, so he runs out into the rain to bring it to her. She raises her hands to keep him relatively dry, and she asks him to retrieve the wallet from her backpack. Surprisingly, Kyo discovers an umbrella, which Anna claims is broken. He takes out the wallet, meekly unbuttons the raincoat, and slips it into her shirt pocket. He runs back to school, and he discovers that the umbrella is in perfect working condition. He wonders if she genuinely forgot she had one or did it on purpose, but when she returns with a plastic bag full of snacks, he concludes that she was simply hungry. She hands him a chocolate mint popsicle. After a brief debate over whether Anna likes chocolate mint, Kaya realizes he has romantic feelings for her. He puts on his jacket and leaves, and Anna claims she is also in love. He has to confirm that she actually means chocolate mint. The day for their workplace visit arrives, and they visit Akita Publishing. Mocha claims that she knows a lot about manga since she reads One P, Hunter, and Attack On. They are taken to the upper floors, where Adaki unsuccessfully tries to strike up a conversation with Anna, and he digs his own grave when he says he loves the G-cup knockers of Anna's co-worker at the modeling agency. Eventually, Adaki bonds with Serena and Mocha over their mutual interest in Crow's Worst. Kyo holds back his excitement so he can remain with Anna. She notices him fidgeting around, and she drags him so he can look at the original Baki draft himself. He's glad he did. Later, Adaki asks if artists use real-life references when they draw erotic artwork, to which she quickly replies no. On the way down, another office worker joins them, forcing Anna and Kyo to nearly squeeze together. Without a safe place to look, he closes his eyes. When they reach the ground floor, he catches Anna in a trance, and they remain in the elevator long after everyone else has left. On the way home, Anna and Kyo talk about manga, and she asks if he's read the romance manga Kimiero Octave, which he denies. However, when she and Shihiro laugh at the idea of him reading a rom-com, his feelings are hurt. He stops by the bathroom to air out his frustrations, but when he returns, he discovers that only Anna is waiting for him. She'd failed to tell the others where he'd gone. 
They run as fast as they can to the train platform, but they helplessly watch as the efficient Japanese transport system works as scheduled. Keo is secretly overjoyed that he has some alone time with Anna, but his grin is wiped off when he sees her crying. To calm her down, he buys her milk tea and takes responsibility for why they were left behind. He says he should have announced where he was going to the group, a prospect that amuses Anna. On the train ride home, Keo was conscious of Anna's presence and her popularity as a model. When a stream of passengers comes in, Anna pulls in closer to avoid separating. She shares her excitement for Hara and Kenta's romantic progress, but with how close she is, Kyo can barely register a word she's saying. They eventually reunite with Chihiro and the others. Chihiro apologizes for failing to notice they were missing, and they reconcile. The following day, Kyo recounts his workplace visit, and his sister, Kana, is amused by him enjoying his school life. He wonders if it is because of his infatuation with Anna, but he convinces himself that she and Chihiro are just making fun of him. Meanwhile, Anna is standing outside their school gate, waiting for no one in particular. She stops Kyo and lends him copies of her Kimihiro Octave, explaining that she'll be leaving early today, so she wouldn't be able to give it to him later. Kyo begins walking back, and he asks if Anna still has business waiting outside the gate. She pretends to excuse herself, but everyone knows she was just waiting for him. Later, she drops by the library anyway to check up on him. She sees that he isn't reading the manga she lent him, though he claims to prefer reading such things at home. She insists that he read it now, leading to a moan of physical intimacy. She excuses herself, but Kyo manages to ask her if she'll be at school tomorrow. She nods and says that, without fail, she'll be at the library tomorrow. Later, Kyo wonders how Anna reads manga at home. After flipping through some pages, crumbs fall out, and he gets his answer. The next day, Anna asks him if he's read it, but he claims that he got distracted. Adaki, noticing that Kyo seems to be friendly with Anna, asks him if she has a boyfriend, since he's come to like her too. Kyo knows she's never had one, but he keeps his mouth shut. He asks Adachi what he likes about Anna, but most of it is in relation to Anna's looks or her seductive and alluring figure. For the first time, Kyo feels disgusted by Adachi's objectification of her. However, as he walks back into class, he begins to wonder if his feelings for her are genuine too. He can't help but steal a glance at Anna's bare legs, and Adachi gives him a thumbs up. Later, when he and Anna arrive at the library, she is incensed to see a poster forbidding snacks. She finds it strange that it came out of nowhere, since it's not like anybody eats in the library to begin with. Curious as to why the sign was put up, they question the librarian. The librarian shares that she discovered the wrapper of a candy lozenge, and she saw it fit to remind everyone not to eat inside the library. Anna is in tatters. Kyo wonders if this is the end of his leisure time with Anna, but she continues to unashamedly eat. That sign won't stop her, because she can't read. When he sees the librarian, he holds her hand to hide the macadamia chocolate, all while finally realizing his feelings for her are genuine. The librarian simply clears her throat and leaves. Anna, noticing that the chocolate in her hand has melted, asks Kiyo to leave so she can lick it up. Kiyo warns her to stay away from snacks from now on, and he accepts that his time with her is over. However, the very next day, Anna shows up at the library, claiming that she has cut down on her snacking by 30%. Having accepted his feelings for Anna, Kyo does the completely normal thing and Googles her. After discovering that she guest stars in a TV show, he races downstairs only to find that it has already ended. The next day, Kyo's class prepares for a routine marathon. During the race, Anna ends up running behind Kyo. She catches up to him, but he speeds ahead out of embarrassment. To speed up, Anna removes her jersey, though Kyo notices that her gym shirt is on backwards. She flips it forward while running, and Kyo doesn't know where to look. Anna finally catches a glimpse of Kyo's right eye, which is usually concealed behind his hair. He hides it in a hurry, and the two of them end up veering off course. Afterwards, as the two struggle to catch their breath, Anna reaches out her hand to Kyo, and he helps her up. As she runs off to chat with Hara, Kyo is left with the sensation of Anna's soft hand. Later, Kyo realizes that he and Anna accidentally swapped jerseys. Fearing that she might be ridiculed if caught wearing his jersey, he resolves to fix it. However, things take a turn for the worse as Anna unknowingly puts on his jersey, and as Adaki volunteers to answer something on the board. To prevent this, Kyo vigorously volunteers to answer it instead. While up on the board, he tries to signal Anna regarding the jersey, but his efforts fail. He also gets the wrong answer on the board, and he wants to curl up into a ball and die. During lunch, Kyo's lifespan drastically shrinks each time Anna nearly exposes their jersey problem. To her credit, she manages to conceal it. Towards the end, Anna gestures for him to follow her to the nurse's office. 
She had noticed they swapped jerseys for some time, though Kyo can only speculate when she first noticed it. After sneaking a sniff of his jersey, Anna returns it. She then pulls Kyo aside so they can measure each other's heights, though he is forced to pull a chair. She is roughly 172 centimeters tall. She insists that they retake his height, which leads to her accidentally stepping on the scale. She accuses him of seeing her weight, but he denies it. The next day, the class is in an uproar over Anna being cast in a movie along with Naoki, an artist so popular that even Kyo has heard of him. However, even though Anna's friends are excited, she doesn't seem as delighted. Maida announces that they'll be switching seat positions, and he has them draw lots. Kyo is disappointed that Anna is a seat ahead of him, and he is irked that Adaki is sitting next to her. However, he has another problem. Anna is so tall that he can't see the board. They make eye contact, and he has to avert his gaze. Adaki tries to get closer with Anna by pretending that he left his textbook at home, but Kyo digs around Adaki's desk to pull out the allegedly missing textbook. When Hara notices him in distress, she offers to share her notes, causing Anna to be jealous. After class, Anna is in a markedly bad mood. In response, Kyo says that during class, all he can see is Anna. Anna blushes hard, and Kyo's brain only catches up a few moments later. Hara returns to inform them that she's talked with Maida regarding their seating arrangement, and he ends up in front with Adaki. Later, at the library, Kyo asks Anna about her upcoming movie role, and she excitedly talks about her small part. He realizes that she was feeling down earlier because her friends were more focused on Naoki. She excitedly practices her one line in the movie, You're a creep, which gets Kyo hyped up. Noticing that they're attracting strange glares, they move to a utility closet. Upon learning that the movie will come out roughly two years from now, he is hit with the reality that they'll be graduating. She asks if he'll watch it in the future, and he promises to. She leaves without practicing her line, remarking that she can no longer say it to his face. That evening, Kyutaru tunes into Columbus Gaiken, the TV show that Anna co-stars in. However, an entire episode flies by without her saying a single line. Kyo is somewhat relieved, though he knows that Anna must be frustrated. The next day, Anna proudly tells her friends that she got a lot of screen time, and she even gives Mocha a poor forgery of Naoki's signature. When Shihiro is out with the flu, Anna uses Mocha as a substitute lap seat. However, when Mocha touches her in an uncomfortable way, Serena draws a diagram on the board so Anna can shade the areas where she is okay with being touched. Adaki nearly erases it, but Kiyo volunteers on his behalf, and he sees no harm in memorizing the diagram for his own reference. Chihiro returns a few days later after making a full recovery, and with the parent-teacher conference right around the corner, Anna boasts that she's been making some headway in her studies. She brings Chihiro to the library, where Kiyo helps by tutoring her in math. Chihiro praises him for his work ethic, and she brings up the fact that Anna talks about him quite a bit. She hopes that Anna hasn't done anything weird to him, and she brings up a story of how Anna had some whipped cream on her face, but because she couldn't wipe it, she tried wiping it away with more whipped cream. Chihiro notices that Kyo seems to be talking normally to her, when she usually notes that he is much more nervous when talking to girls. Eventually, the dreaded parent-teacher conference day arrives, and Kyo keeps away from his mother until the last second. He spies from around the corner Anna and her own mother. Kyo's mom introduces herself to Anna, who replies that she often talks to her son. The two trade bits of candy, much to the dismay of Anna's mom. Eventually, Kyo gets through the parent-teacher conference without a hitch. On the way back, she shares her encounter with Anna, and Kyo catches Anna walking right behind them. The next day, after Anna teases him a bit about his mother, she asks him to tutor her. However, when he notices the librarian nearby, he realizes Anna's candy is out in the open. He whispers into her ear to hide it, but the suddenness causes her to stumble back. In the end, Kyo manages to conceal the candy. Later, Anna revises her Do Not Touch chart to include her ears. Later, Kyo bikes home in the rain, having forgotten his raincoat. When Anna sees him, she offers to place a plastic on his head, but it doesn't work out. She suggests that they ride home together while she lifts an umbrella over her head, but she realizes that she still has work, and they go their separate ways. When Kyo arrives home, he discovers that Anna left behind her plastic bag filled with snacks. He races to the station to find her, and he manages to catch her just before she heads inside, and she thanks him for going all this way. Later, Kyo falls asleep while going through Anna's Instagram, and he has a fever dream regarding big and small Annas. He wakes up in a cold sweat, drenched from a fever. He doesn't mind missing school, and being home alone has its merits. Later that afternoon, Anna pays him a visit, though he nearly ignores the doorbells. She hands him some strawberry Bavarian cream they had for lunch, and she heads home. 
However, Kyo grows a pear and invites her inside for some tea. And even he can't believe that he had the guts to do this. His parents aren't home either. Kyo prepares some tea, and he heads upstairs to change. However, he collapses from his fever, and Anna discovers him minutes later. She helps him to his bed, and she changes his shirt, and in Kyo's delirious state, he believes he is still in a dream. He allows his head to fall on Anna, and she embraces him. He reawakens later that evening with Kana kneeling by his bedside. She gives him the Bavarian cream that Anna left behind, as well as a note wishing him to get well soon. A few days later, Kyo's mom tells him that she caught Anna standing outside their house, visibly concerned for his well-being. On his way to school, he bumps into Anna, who now has a sore throat. When they arrive at school, Anna runs into Chihiro, who now understands that Anna's fever is behind her strange behavior the other day. Anna had brought home the strawberry Bavarian cream without even eating it. Chihiro thought the world was ending. 